So without further ado, my new segment, Phone a Friend. <laughs> call him up, 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 call him up. I'm beating for a reason, trying to stay undefeated, yeah. Call him up, 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 call him up. This game of the season, don't lie, we're all leaving, yeah. Who I have on the show today, um, I spoke to him almost two years ago. Uh, he had retired at that time, and, you know, we had a great conversation, uh, went into detail about a lot of things in his life and what he was pursuing. And, you know, we really, really um, had a great in-depth conversation, really good guy. He's now with the Houston Astros down there in Florida in spring training, Um Welcome to the show, my man, Ty Butcher. How you doing, man? Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, Barry. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, it's been it's been two years. It's crazy to think back, you know, yeah. when we first had this first time, and now we're here just kind of re reminiscing about what just, you know, everything that got me to this point, and yeah. obviously what got you to this point, because things are looking good. I've been following what you've been putting out there, so it's always good to see good content. Absolutely, man. I appreciate yep. you. So let's kind of let's kind of take it a little back, Ty. Um, I remember the day like it was yesterday. Uh, it was April fourth, um, twenty twenty one, and I got the ticker on the on the on the um, on ESPN. I was just like, Ty Butcher retired. What the hell's going on? So I reached out to you and I said, Hey, listen, man, I would love to interview you. And you know, you hit me back and said, Listen, I'm not taking any interviews right now, but you know, when I'm ready. You know, mm -hmm. we can definitely get it going. And, and you know, you, you definitely kept your word, man. And we had a great conversation about how it was for you in regards to burnout and you not having the love of the game. And, um, you know, it was really a difficult uh, time for you. And it was an easy decision to kind of walk away from that. So, you know, mm -hmm. two almost two years removed, you know, you and your, your, your beautiful wife, Sam, you guys have, you know, went to a lot of things and kind of spent a lot of time together, really did some soul searching and doing some other stuff, some um, philanthropy stuff and some charity stuff and nonprofit stuff. But do you feel that your, your love of the game is back now? Man, that's a great question. Um, I think it's an easy question now because back then when I was young, 19 years old, you know, we go through this game. Um, anyways, Barry, just, like I said, I appreciate you um, taking interest in this because it is definitely like a situation that um, it's at times was kind of difficult to kind of deal with not having a right. routine every day, right. not going to the field, not being around teammates and coaches um, and just really detaching. Like at first, you know, everything was great. Um, I definitely, as you said earlier, and as we talked about this in the past, like um, that's kind of how I looked at it now is just burnout. Um it's a pretty, it's an interesting thing. There's a lot of factors that can go on. You know, I've, I've said a lot of things about it. Um, and for me, it's just about understanding where I was then and trying to do something different than just baseball, you know, like, yes. Did I, do I love it now? Um, yeah. Like I love everything about it and everything that it gives me. Um, I just, at the time, it definitely wasn't an enjoyable process just because of all the pressure and like stress that the anxiety and things that you could add on to your plate. Um, you know, it's just, it's not an enjoyable feeling, especially when you're doing it a hundred and, you know, 60 something times a year, spring training off season. Um, and you've done it for your whole life. You just, you just get to this, the point. And that's where COVID really kind of emphasized that was this is not, um, I'm not trying to say like COVID caused me to do this. It just COVID gave me the opportunity to do something other than baseball. And so my wife and I really capitalized on that. You know, we lived, we lived in an RV, we traveled across the country. Right. We did all kinds of stuff, man. So um, for me, it was just, my life was just this one path. COVID happened. We did some other things. I really found enjoyment with those other things and um, things just kind of transpired from there. Um, started, asking a little bit more questions, understanding, you know, why things happen more, um, detaching from certain things that maybe felt like they were pulling you in a negative way. 
uh trying not you know i definitely had some anger going out i think a little bit too like just i was you know just had some built up frustration with maybe how i dealt with stuff in the past with baseball and now it's just it's all fun now because it's basically you know you understand why you play this game what you do it for and everything else it's super simple from there man like you go to the field you know you just you do your business you work out um you have that one goal in mind and that's to basically just get the batter out. And that's how I look at it. Like I'm looking at it like day by day, instead of year by year, it's like my job's to come to the field, be the best teammate, be the best player, do my job as well as possible. And then get the batter out as many times as it's, it's and that's where it's like the game aspect of it yeah. that I never looked at it before. Right. It was like a job. It's like, it truly is a game when you look at it. Like I have to be better than the hitter more times than he's better than me. But right. anyways, it's, long way of answering your question yeah like i i do love it i i do love it now yeah just because i really was able to take kind of a st- uh, step back and just understand okay why am i playing this what do i like about it and all those things that maybe a young kid at four or five years old you just don't really get to ask yourself you know yeah absolutely man i mean you know you you said you know growing up you were never truly a fan of it and it was because of your your physical attributes, you're tall, you have this big arm and all of those things. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, why not play baseball? And it's like, now you understand why you were given those physical gifts, why you were mm-hmm. given this special, you know, gift of throwing. And, you know, it's now, you know, you still have time to be able to, to have a very solid career and, and understand what you're doing and, you know, kind of enjoy the game within the game, right? Because, you know, pitching is a science. And it's all about, yeah. you know, being able to hit the corners and understanding what the batters, what his tendencies are, where he doesn't like the ball and where you can be able to do things. So there's so much different elements into pitching that it can keep your mind occupied if you're really focused and you mm-hmm. give it your all. So, you know, it's it's really good to see that you have that passion again. And, you know, I'm a big fan of you. I've always been a big fan. So, you know, I'm definitely going to be rooting for you 100 percent, man. Um Thank you. Yeah, Thank of course. You. Of course. Now, you know, you're with you. You signed the uh, the minor league deal and got a spring training invitation with the Houston Astros. They're the defending champs. You know, do you see that uptick of, you know, that level <laughs> of of competition, that level of, OK, this is this is a World Series team here. I know that they, they've missed some, you know, they're losing some parts, but this is still a team that's very, very formidable. And, you know, how's it going so far down there? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's incredible. It's definitely a different experience um, than Arizona the last couple of years. You know, being on the Gulf side in Fort Myers was definitely with Boston for five years. That was fun, but that was the minor leagues. And, and, you know, I never really experienced big league camp out there. So being able to come over to West Palm Beach and close to Miami, like it's a very, it's a very nice it's a very nice feel. Like you just enjoy, um, you know, I've, I've always enjoyed spring training. I really have always, I I like it. It's a special time of year for me. Um, my wife loves it, but there's definitely just an energy in the air when you walk in. Um, it's just, things are, there's just, well, I I guess it's just impressive because there's an expectation now set. Like before, like, you know, they've been winning for the last six years and competing heavily every single year. And that's, it's like, at some point you have to sit back and say, what are they doing that other teams aren't? Right. And you keep seeing pitchers go into that organization and come out, you know, better than they ever were. It's a lot of success. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of success across the board, man. Like, I mean, the hitters, the approach, but I think that just goes into the work ethic. Um, You know, when I just walking in seeing everyone like, everybody's extremely focused when they're working, which is cool to see. Um, there's not, you know, it's kind of a downtime right now. So I don't want to speak, I, I guess I don't want to speak too much on this just because for me, it's just a really, it's a really positive experience to be right. within an organization that's winning um, in order to basically test yourself against the best out there, you know, Absolutely. and they have the best, the best, you know, staff and bullpen out of anybody. And so if you can compete with that and you can make that team, you know, what does that say about you? I think it's a pretty interesting um, dynamic that I just, I I love being here so far. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, 
in regards to you personally, um, how was it hard for you to uh, like regain your mechanics? Because obviously, you know, being the, being away from the game for a year, you know, what was the hardest thing? Was it was it trying to find a new um, delivery? Was it was it a different arm angle? Was it the same thing? Did you tweak certain things? Did you kind of try to break things down and build yourself back up? Like, you know, what what strategy did you really kind of focus on? Wow. Honestly, Barry. It has been way harder than I thought. Like yeah. this process coming back, man, has been it's been tough. Like it has been you know, I, I did a lot of running and I did a lot of swimming in my routine. I did this daily routine where I just tried to keep something every day. I did it for a long time. Um, and it really kind of kept me grounded while I was away from the game. But during that process, sitting around a lot more, not stretching every single day, not eating healthy every single day, not having your body, you know, massaged and right. stretched by trainers, mobility exercises, like <laughs> power, expl like, dude, it's, I mean, it's a whole system. Like, it's like you, you're building a Ferrari up from the, from ground zero. Right. Like, and so like, I, I, that's just how I look at it. Like I'm trying to build my body up as strong and as explosive as possible. And I did that for so long and for so many years that when you stop doing that, you just go from this to just straight down. Wow. Yeah. Like your joints, you know, you have to put like med balls and heavy weights and plyos and like you have to stress the joints and the capsules and the ligaments and like expand them and, you know, work them, get the muscle stronger, man. And so not to mention I was 270 pounds at 29% body fat and I, <laughs> and I played at 238. Yeah. Or, 14% body fat. Right, so, right. Yeah, I'm a, I'm definitely like finally getting back to almost where I was before when I stopped, which is that's cool. Good. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Listen, man, and that's that's a testament to your your dedication and your hard work of trying to get back there. You know what I mean? Like it's that in itself would make guys quit. You know what I mean? Just the the, the comeback, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, the fact that you you're you're there, you know, you're going to get some more work and and, and you're going to continue to to elevate your game. So, you know, definitely kudos, kudos to you for that. You should definitely, you know, pat yourself on the back for that, man. Thank you. Thank you. No, it's been, it's been hard. It's been hard. Last year was tough. AAA was tough, but I'm definitely, um, you know, I also, as you were talking about genetics too, like it, it helps when you have the body frame and you have the yeah. ability to do that. You know, not a lot of people have the ability to be as explosive as other athletes. And right. I wish I was more explosive than I can list you, you know, five guys right now that I wish I was like, it's just, it's just how things are. And, yeah. um, it's just how the way life, how life is. And so you just accept it and whatever you got, you just have to give it your best with it. It's, it's definitely cliche, but you really do got to focus and try really, really hard. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now there's a couple of, um, rule changes in major league baseball this year. You know, you got the pitch clock, and, uh, you know, you have the elimination of the uh, of the shift. Now, mm -hmm. you know, what what are your thoughts on the pitch clock? Uh, I pitch quick anyway. So to me, it's second nature. Like, <laughs> dude, I love pitching quick. Like yeah. every everybody's always tried to slow me down. I'm like, does it really matter? Right. You know, who says you can't go fast? Like who's there's no rule on that. So if this helps me, then I'm just going to go, hey, throw the ball, catch it, run back, up. you know, get back on the mound, throw it again. Um, I, but I do think it's, we did it in AAA this year or last year and it was fine. Like it was to me, not a big deal. Um, right. it was easy. Um, it, it maybe sped the game up 15, 20 minutes, but the games out there, they, you know, they used to be two hours and 30 minutes, two hours and 40 minutes. Now games are hour 50, two hours and 10 minutes. Um, so it's nice. It's nice having like. It's definitely nice to uh, see that. And then the shift to me is I always gave up pits up the middle anyway. So <laughs> it's, it's like just stick someone right up behind second base and I'll be happy. Oh, and then down third base line too. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, man, I, I, I definitely am happy that the shift is gone because I think it was, you know, it served its purpose. But, you know, it's just it's just one of those ancillary things that just it just didn't have its place anymore in the game. You know what I mean, but in regards to the pitch clock. I agree with you. I think, you know, we'll see a difference, I guess, in regards to the time, you know, 30, 35 minutes or so. But just to get guys comfortable of working quick, of being able to process quicker 
and be able to get right into your mechanics and kind of, you know, get the ball going. So I think it's going to be a really, really good thing for Major League Baseball, man. And, you know, the fact that you're already, you know, you already work quick, it has, it has no mm-hmm. bearings on your game anyway. So, you know, that's definitely a good thing. Um, yeah. Yep. Now, you and Sam, you know, you guys, you know, w- w- when you had your hiatus, you, you, you know, you had a, a, a myriad of shows that I used to frequently watch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are you going to are you going to bring those back? <laughs> Man, Drip Social was a passion. That was a lifestyle. That was yeah. like a whole trippy, awesome brand without the trippy. Like that just was, was us thinking, you know, let's have fun with people that supported us that right. want to just do something different. Sam and I love entrepreneurship. You know, we love it, man. And we have, I, I have an eccentric side, clearly. Um, I love, I've always loved art. Um, yeah. I wish, I still wish I would have been, you know, stuck with art for a while. Um, I gave it up a long time, but I was really good um i think that's why i'm like drawn to nfts too so <laughs> yeah yeah i love nfts i'm obsessed with those you don't um, have to put me on to that man i i, I am i am behind uh, on the nft game you got to put me on to that hey it, you know what everyone's going to be on to it in a certain amount of time okay. so you just got to pick your time slot it's like you want to jump in now you want to jump in 10 years from now got gotcha. you know, it's up to you <laughs> got gotcha, you gotcha. so but uh yeah no uh the, the shows definitely are going to probably i mean it's tough because that was like the off season, yeah. you know, Sam and I had no, you know, we had no responsibilities. It was just her and I, we could do whatever we want. You know, right. we, we had fun. Um, we had a blast. I mean, her and I have the most fun together, I think, than anyone. So um, to be able to do that with your wife and try to build a business and just have fun with each other and live in Florida and have some wine at night. Yeah. Um, you know, it's fun, man. So I definitely will do stuff after baseball, but for now it's like, I, I think that's something too. Like I've always had that side that I wanted to discover. Like I've always loved business. And I've always loved investing and stuff like that. I think a lot of athletes do, but you really do got to take it with a mild approach and understand that, Hey, right now, like you spent, and that's where I got to, like, I got to the point where I was like, I spent 20 years playing this game. Like, right. I'm not going to just throw this away and start another 20 years on something completely new because Absolutely. if you're, you know, if, if you're going to do something to me, it's like, you if you're going to do something for life that you really want to pursue like i just don't settle for not trying to be the best not saying you're going to be the best but like give it an honest shot to be, you know be the very best that you can but like really stretch the limits with with what you think is like trying to be the best and like some like i'm naturally a lazy guy so I push myself a little harder <laughs> you know like yeah, I, just no, I get you i get you man i get you so I know you're not big into like other sports, but are you you gonna watch the Super Bowl this this weekend? Oh my god! I was thinking I was like, no one's gonna ask me if I'm gonna watch football. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna watch it just because I. It's impressive to see what Patrick Mahomes is doing. I mean, it's right. incredible. <laughs> I love it. Guys, just an absolute freak. He's yeah. amazing to watch, and the Eagles. Um, I feel like so many people hate on the Eagles. I don't really follow, keep up with football, but like, I like to see them just like sticking it to people. Like, all right, we're gonna, we're, yeah. we're in the Super Bowl, you know? Like, it's, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I, I will watch it. I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna like tune in like hard to it though. Yeah, man. Besides listen, the Panthers. You're gonna watch it. It's, Panthers, it's a culture I'm, thing at this point. It's definitely a culture thing that, you know, everybody watches the Super mm-hmm. Bowl. So, you know, I figured I'd ask you because I know I know you're I know you're a man of you know you you're into different things and you know you'd rather play your video well, games and all that other stuff. So you know what I mean? <laughs> dude, I yeah, I do love my video games, but I just <laughs> um I do love my video games, but I'm actually very like intrigued with what the commercials are for these Super Bowls. Like yeah. last year was like there's some awesome stuff. I love learning about that stuff. So I, I know um the Mets I think just paid a million dollars to advertised that was on some article or something so we'll see i'm sure crypt oh uh, nft company um digi whatever something yeah. they're they're going to be advertising their nft companies so okay if, okay yeah, yeah so it's like it's kind of getting to that point now now nah, that's what's up man like, yeah. like i said man you're gonna you're gonna have to give me some pointers on this nft thing some sometime during the season man but you know i'm definitely gonna have you uh, hopefully, you know, if you have the time, man, you could be able to come in here and, you know, give some insight in regards to how the season is going and stuff like that. But, you know, um, 
I, I, I wish you nothing but success for this season. I think you're going to do great. I think you're with the right organization. I think they're going to take care of you. I think you're going to be able to learn a lot of things and add to your game and, and hone your craft and really show everybody, you know, how talented Ty Butchery is. So, you know, I'm, I'm definitely going to be rooting for you, buddy. Honestly, Barry, thank you, man. Um, appreciate you saying that. It's, it's, uh, I'm excited. Like, I'm really excited now. Like, this is a definitely the next 10, 11 years of my life is going to be a point where you get to kind of really strive for what you've wanted. And so I'm excited to pursue that. And throwing hard is something I've always admired. I mean, that's a major reason why I left the game of baseball. It's mm -hmm. like to be able to go out there and try to do something as hard as you can and as precise as you can. And as specialized, um, you feel like you're a heart surgeon, even though it's definitely not <laughs> the same. But like with that intent, it's just it's very because it's very hard to get that level of focus. And yeah, I'm nowhere. I'm nowhere near a lot of these guys out there. Um, so it's, you know, to come to this organization and see people do that and just watch pros. I've been doing it for a long time. It's 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 fun to kind of try to or try to compete with that, I guess you could say. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. You know, I'm a yeah. Mets fan, but I'm, I'm going to be rooting for the Astros heavy. And I'm a big Dusty Baker guy, too. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm excited to meet him. I can't yeah. wait. Yeah, definitely, man. Well, Ty, it was it was fun to have you on, man. Like I said, man, hopefully I can have you on during the season so we could talk a little baseball. Yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely. We can probably do some over the All-Star break and maybe on just we have we have off days, too. So um, we have an off day every single week. So I'm sure we could find some there. But just hit me up, man. You, you know, you have my number and we can go from there. All right, man. I'll talk to you.